While talking to someone in my Discord server, I came across this post by Floyd Toole on AVS forums. Figure 12.4 in the third edition of my book shows the evolution of a steady state room curve using very highly rated loudspeakers as a guide. The population includes several cone dome products in the cone horn M2. The result is a tightly grouped collection of room curves, from which an average curve is easily determined. It is a gently downward tilted line with a slight depression around 2 kHz. The consequence of the nearly universal directivity discontinuity at the woofer to mid-range to tweeter crossover. I took the liberty of removing that small dip and creating an idealized room curve which I attach. You see, this whole time, I was comparing headphones to ideal speakers. The issue, however, is that most studios are not using perfect speakers. This is the Neumann KH80, a very popular studio monitor. It is a traditionally designed loudspeaker with a tweeter and a woofer. This is the Genelec A341A. Genelec's entry-level coaxial. The tweeter and woofer function as one unit. It is significantly more expensive than the Neumann KH80 and is used by far less people. At 2 kHz, we can see the directivity discontinuity issue occurring in the sound power. This results in a dip in the in-room response, which is weighted as 12% direct sound, 44% early reflections, and 44% sound power. On the other hand, since the Genelec A341A is a coaxial speaker, it does not have this directivity issue. In the in-room response, there is no dip. In Harman's 2013 target, they did not have this dip. In the 2018 target, they added the dip. After looking at the measurements of the Revel Perforama 3 F208 loudspeaker that Harman initially used in their test, we can see the same directivity discontinuity issue and the dip occurring in their in-room response, very closely resembling that of the Harman 2018 target. I asked Sean Olive if that was why the dip was introduced, and he said it was largely driven by feedback from trained listeners who felt it was too hot in that area. Subsequent tests confirmed this adjustment was preferred. It's pretty crazy that target curves have to compensate for flawed loudspeaker designs. I admit that I was wrong about bashing the high mid scoop. There was real data to support this as necessary. The question going forward is, do we want to keep accounting for flawed loudspeaker design? or create a better standard. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, a comment, and possibly share it with your friends.